Thank you for inviting me into your homes. It's good to be with you again, being able to share and pray together uh, in this way. And I hope that you're all well. Uh, let's begin our, uh, I selected for today, uh, Psalm 46. I remember back at 9-11, that this was a psalm that uh, I even remember some of the commentators on an NF, NFL game uh, quoting and saying that people found comfort in this, especially in the midst of trials, uh, as we were going through at 9-11. Psalm 46. God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. Though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea. Though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within her. She will not fall. She will be helped at the break of day. Nations are in an uproar. Kingdoms fall. God lifts his voice the earth melts. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. He makes war cease to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shields with fire. He says, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations and I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Oh God, you are our refuge and strength. We pray for our nation and the world as we face this health crisis. Continue to protect the most vulnerable among us and those who are now sick. Grant wisdom and patience and clarity of thought to all those who are working in our health care system. They are working so hard through this crisis. Be with them. Protect them as they are working, caring for others, for this work puts them at greater risk. Guide us as we consider how to best be prepared and respond within our families congregations, workplaces, and communities. Give us courage to face these days, not with fear, but with compassion, with appropriate concern and acts of service, loving our neighbors as ourselves, and trusting that you are watching over all of us. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our first reading is from Romans chapter 8. We know that the whole creation has been groaning as in pains of childbirth right up to this present time. Not only so, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly as we wait eagerly for our adoption, the redemption of our bodies. For, this, uh, for in this hope we were saved. But hope that is seen is no hope at all. Who hopes for what they already have? But if we hope for what we do not yet have, we wait for it patiently. In the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. And he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit because the Spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance with the will of God, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, we live in a beautiful world created by God. Sometimes, uh, like the other night, I looked up and I was just amazed at the stars that you can see, the beauty, just imagining the, the, the vastness of this uh, universe. Years ago, I remember our family took a trip and we were standing at the rim of the Grand Canyon. And all I could think was, wow, what a beautiful sight. It's just the immensity of it. Scientists tell us how perfectly this, this world, the earth, is made for, for life. 
All that we have, it, it gives us everything we need. But we also know that there are natural disasters. There are earthquakes, there's storms, and yes, pandemics. Paul writes, we know that the whole creation has been groaning. This is an imperfect world. The beauty of it, yes, but it's imperfect. It's decaying, even as our own bodies are imperfect and decaying. And so he says, we wait patiently for our adoption, the redemption of our bodies, the hope of everlasting life with God. The world is not our final destination. We're traveling through it. And we need to be God's people as we travel through it, walking in God's ways. Both the Old Testament and the New Testament are not Pollyanna about the realities of the world, about wars, pestilence, all the problems. But again and again, they go back to, but the God of Jacob is our fortress. He's the one that we put our trust in. He's the one who helps us through. Here we are experiencing famines. We experience plagues, wars, persecutions, hardships. And Paul's encouragement is to pray. Trust in God who cares. We live in hope. Hope that not only for this life, but for the life to come. As God's people, the Spirit also helps us in our weaknesses, Paul says. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes through our groans. My heart goes out right now to the people of Italy, the people that are, are most hit by this pandemic. How many have died? The hardship, the hurt. My, I, I groan in prayer. And sometimes we don't know what to say, but we, but we just lift it up to God. Sometimes prayer is simply just emotion, the feeling, our gut reaction. Or maybe we are in the midst of something that we're experiencing. We don't know what to say. And so we just, in our, in our gut, it's, please, God, help. Even Jesus from the cross, he, he cries out, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? He, he's quoting Psalm 22, verse 1. That psalm kind of, within it, it has a picture of one who is being tormented, even the, the piercing of hands and feet. But it ends with praising God. When we're not sure what to pray, let the spirit within us pour out our heart, our prayers. Our second reading is also, it's a reminder that in the end, no matter what, we have a final destination. And that destination is perfect. And God provides the way. Second reading, Romans chapter 8. And we know that in all things, God works together for good for those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, for your sake, we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In this life, there will be sickness. There will be death. There will be mourning. There will be crying. There will be pain. Yes, that's part of this world. But in Revelations chapter 21, it describes the kingdom of God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain. For the old order of things is passed away. See, that's what we look forward to. That's our redemption. That's our promise of the kingdom of heaven. This is what God gives us through our Savior, Jesus. That's what he provides. This is the hope. This is the gospel. And so Paul writes 
And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. That is, the followers of Christ. What shall separate us from the love of Christ? Nothing. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors. That's the key. Our gospel text is one of a healing stories that comes from the Gospel of John. The Gospel according to St. John, the ninth chapter. As Jesus went along, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Neither this man nor his parents sinned, said Jesus. But this happened so that the works of God might be displayed in him. As long as it is day, we must do the works of him who sent me. Night is coming when no one can work. While I am in the world, I am the light of the world. After saying this, he spit on the ground, made some mud with the saliva, and put it on the man's eyes. Go, he told him, wash in the pool of Siloam. This word means scent. So the man went and washed and came home seeing. The gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Well, that was part of Jewish culture. In Jesus' day, they thought that it was sins that caused the bad things in people's life. It was, it was like punishment for what they had done. And so they asked, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? But Jesus flips it around. It's not a punishment. It's an opportunity. Neither this man nor his parents sinned. Jesus said, but this has happened so that the works of God might be displayed in him. As long as it is day, we must do the works of him who sent me. I am the light of the world, Jesus said. See, he was letting God's light shine through him, through what he did, the healings, the way he loved, the way he reached out, all that he did. It was God's light shining in the world. We see in Jesus the love of God. But Jesus also called us to be the light of the world. Let your light so shine that others may see your good deeds, your love, and give glory to your Father in heaven. Every situation, especially trials, can be an opportunity to shine, to show forth God's love. We had an exchange student from Japan. We called him Leo. That wasn't his Japanese name exactly, but it worked for us as Americans. One of the things that he did was um, on the anniversary of the tsunami, he shared about Japan and all that they had gone through, but also the fact that it was an opportunity for him to give thanks because it was the U.S. Navy and others who were the first to come and help. But he told the story about how he was at school when the earthquake came. It shook their desks. They all went outside. And they were on the ground, you know, shook to the ground. And then they could see in the distance, after some time, an explosion out at the, at, the, uh, at the foot of the ocean. And he knew that it was where his father worked. It was ours, indeed. He, was, he had to make his way home. His, his mother finally came home and his brother. And they all thought that they had seen the last of their father. But he came home at midnight. He said, that was one of the first times he can remember crying at the happiness of seeing his father again. You see, at his workplace, they had a plan. They, they knew that if these kinds of things happened, they knew what the plan was. They had a place within their, within their work, what they called the safe room. And when the earthquake came, they calmly and faithfully moved up to the safe room, 5,000 people. And they were all saved. They were all saved. Our creator also provides a way. He provides us with opportunities. May we, within this crisis, we need to stay calm, but also be faithful. Faithful to what Christ calls us to. To love our neighbor as ourself. 
to put our trust in him in the midst of whatever happens, to lift up our hearts in prayer. Allow the Holy Spirit, allow our hearts to groan to God if need be, just laying open for them. May we walk faithfully through this life, and may we walk with Christ on into eternal life, the kingdom of heaven. Amen. I ask you to, uh, to profess your faith with me. Uh, I've talked about God the Father. And so let's say the first article of the Apostles' Creed. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And what does this mean from Luther's small catechism? I believe that God has created me and all that exists. He has given me and still preserves my body and soul with all their powers. He provides me with food and clothing, home and family, daily work, and all I need from day to day. God also protects me in times of danger and guards me from every evil. All this he does out of fatherly and divine goodness and mercy, though I do not deserve it. Therefore, I surely ought to thank and praise, serve and obey him. This is most certainly true. Amen. Well, we're not perfect. We don't always trust in God or follow him the way we ought to. Uh, nor do we always keep his commandment to love one another, to love our neighbor as ourself. And so let's have a time also of confession and forgiveness. It's a time of repentance, that is, admitting our guilt. We haven't always loved God. We haven't always loved our neighbors as we should. But it is also accepting God's gift of forgiveness and the promised gift of his Holy Spirit. Let us declare our trust in our loving creator. God, your love is the one true constant in my life. When we are overwhelmed by day-to-day -day stresses, you are there to strengthen us, to guide us, to ease our burdens. We desire to be renewed by your faithful love. Give us a desire to grow in your word, to follow Jesus, and to bring your love to a needy world. Let us also confess our sin and seek God's forgiveness. Most gracious God, I have not loved and trusted you with my whole heart. And too often, I have neglected to love my neighbor as myself and have not helped others when I could have. Forgive the sin of my actions and inaction. Cleanse my heart and bring me back to you. And now hear the promise of forgiveness in the Holy Spirit. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for you. And for his sake, God forgives you all your sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now let's take a time for, for prayer, for lifting up our hearts to God. Prayers of intercession. In the spirit of Christ, let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we lift up medical personnel and all those working in the health care facilities during this time of crisis. Thank you for the abilities that you have given them. Please protect and keep them safe and healthy. Give them the strength and clarity of mind to do their jobs well. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Lord, we turn to you for comfort and healing. We pray for those who suffer as they long for healing, for those who are in isolation, those who feel lonely or even forgotten, and for those who are ill, we lift them up. Let's take and pause to lift up names in prayer. Dorothy and Joyce, Paul, Jim, Wayne, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of love, we lift up to you those who are grieving the loss of loved ones, especially during this crisis. May we, your people, 
be a comfort and a support to them. Give us the words to speak and the courage to reach out. We lift up, we lift them up to you, the people of Italy, and Dennis and his family, Nathan and Jean and her family, their family. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray for the peace among nations. We pray for governments, for all who have authority at any level, that they may govern with wisdom and compassion, bring down barriers between parties, and create a greater sense of unity and cooperation, especially during this time of crisis. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Now to him, him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us. To God be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations, forever and ever. And all God's children say, Amen. Let us pray together the prayer by which our Lord taught us to pray, our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May he look upon you with his favor and give you his joy, his peace, and his love. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And we close with our hymn, This is my Father's World.